Good evening, everyone. Uh, do what the wilt shall be the whole of the law. I hope this is working because this is the first time I'm using the streaming software for since last May when we did the last stream. And in the meantime, I did something very crazy. I updated the um, Mac OS, and that's never something you really want to do. But you know what? I thought you know it's six months. Since the release of the previous one should be fine, hopefully. Uh, we'll see, as usual. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, and how's, how's everybody doing? It's been a while indeed. Uh, I have been, been busy. Uh, that's why uh, we didn't do any, any stream here on, on YouTube in, uh, in this time. Um, what I've been busy with? Uh, writing the book. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been finally... I've been finishing the manuscript of my first book that will be released by Watkins Media in uh, 2023, in February 2023. Uh, it's, the title changed many times. Originally, it was supposed to be told, titled no, Tell Him After Tears, and that's why this series of live stream it's called. Tell, it's titled uh, Tell Him After Tears. In the meantime, uh, the title has changed to The Aleister Crowley Manual, Telemic Magic for Modern Times. And it is a primer. It is a magical primer. Uh, I discussed this briefly before, and you will hear talk, me talking about this book a lot in the coming months. First of all, because honestly, I am uh, I'm very proud of it. Um, I never thought I had it in me to sit down and organize my thoughts coherently, or at least I tried to coherently, in a book. But I did. Uh, I when I started doing it, when I got you know when I signed the contract, I thought it's gonna be easy because I have all the material already, you know, all the lessons that I've been teaching on Patreon for the last two years. And then I realized that eight tenth, like the eight out of ten of, of of the material was actually in live streams like this ones. So uh, I didn't write down much, right? My I was I was taught more by you know by. Ex by speaking about it, uh, which is what I prefer to do, to be fair. Um, so yes, it was it was quite a challenge to to ga gather all the material, s source everything. Um, of course, uh, this is just like the first draft on, uh, and I and I worked on it all up until I mean I finished like last week, and now I will be start the editing phase with my editor, in uh, well on Monday really, and that's gonna take me into I guess into September. And, and then uh, we hopefully we should have a, a cover. There will be a cover reveal at some point. The, the book cover also has been going through several iterations. Uh, let's put it like this. I, when the, once the cover is over, maybe I'll share with, with everybody like the, all the stages that we went through. It's, it's fascinating. I mean, I, I, you know, I released uh, music albums all my life. I, de I dealt with uh, record labels, with promotion you know promoting agencies uh, it's it's something that I was a you know I was mm, familiar with but uh, you know to go back into this kind of game from another perspective it's it's definitely been very very interesting I hope you will like the book uh, and I hope I will be able to have um, what do you say um, oh a link for you to purchase uh, soon enough uh, let me see here there's I'm getting messages. Okay, uh, so what I want to say is that what we're going to do tonight, right? Um, first of all, there are some links below, apart from my usual links, and uh, that's how you can support me if you want. You can join me on Patreon, you can buy super chats, uh, super stickers, uh, things here on YouTube. All of this is really helpful. You can buy me a coffee on Kofi. Uh, I I really appreciate all the all the support I've been receiving so far, and any kind of support you want to keep giving to me, it's well received, especially in in days in times like this, right? Uh, also, there is uh, an Amazon affiliate link whereby I put together a series of books that can be useful for those of you who are starting with magic, and maybe just not like not just only super beginners book, also more advanced ones, uh, let's say intermediate ones, if you want. And if you click on the link and you get one of those books, I will get a very tiny fraction of it. So uh, thank you very much for doing that as well. Also, there is a link to this app called NGL, which I think it's mean, I'm not gonna lie. 
it's it's an app that I've been working with, what I've been playing with in the last last few days, really, and it's been really fun. And this is why I decided to do a live stream again because pretty much, you know, I found this app where pretty much you can send me or anybody on the app like um, anonymous messages. So I don't know who sends me these messages, right? And uh, and I played it. Well, it, it's tailored tailored for Instagram, right? It has a way for you to reply directly on Instagram through stories. And I re- I've been I've been answering like a lot of questions. Um, magic, uh, mostly mostly based on magic and initiation, Freemasonry, dilemma, you know, whatever I I'm known for at this time in my life. I used to be known for music, not anymore. <laughs> it's it's interesting how you know the, the epochs of time change. It's like the eons, maybe. So. What, while I, I'm gonna you know blub a little bit more, you can send me messages right now on that app if you want to be anonymous, and I will answer here on the live stream directly. Or you can use the chat. Um, I will. I have, unless the uh, you know, the stream fails me again, I have the chat in front of me. So if you want to, you know, if you have any questions you want answered uh, on magic dilemma and th- those topics, I will try and answer them here on the live stream. But the point is, why, why this strange title, uh, Secret Sex Magic Exposed? Well, you know what's that, that saying, like, if you cannot beat them, join them. Um, what I notice is that it's really next to impossible to stand out in so- on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram, unless you, unless you either have a specific look and... Um, you know, and, and I don't because I'm, <laughs> I'm a 44 year old man that doesn't have any, any crazy look anymore. I have, I have tattoos, but I don't have all the piercing I used to have anymore, which I don't know, maybe I should not remove them anyway. So either you have a specific look or you have to game the algorithm with some crazy, um, titles. So I kind of tricked you to, to click on this, but there's a specific reason why I decided to do that. Uh, as I was looking on how to, you know, to update uh, whatever uh, whatever content I create on here on the internet, right? Um, what I've been doing for the last two years, I've been teaching the basics of the Western esoteric tradition. Uh, I've been, I've been working, you know, I've been trying to, to teach those who, those who, those who were locked inside uh, their house during the lockdown years, like how a way to get out of their lockdowns, maybe if not physically with their mind, uh, with magical techniques and pretty much like work through the basics of um, the, I would say the Golden Dome telemic system, right? And in fact, this, this is what uh, you will find in my book. It's a primer and I've been teaching primer, uh, primer level stuff in the last few years. Um, somebody's asking me, can you show the t-shirt? Is that an angel? Yes, that is, uh, uh, let's say, a biblically accurate angel or him. You can find it on my Etsy store if you want to buy it. Uh, link below, as usual. Uh, actually, I don't know if there's a there's a link below. Yes, uh, thank you, Jessica. Jessica put the um, the link in uh, the chat, so you, you can find it there. And uh, um, I, 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 I another thing I've been doing like the last few years, like I, I put together some 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 crazy uh, esoterically inclined designs because I could not find anything I wanted to buy so I'm starting making them the you know the the shirts I wanted to buy myself so back to what I was saying I was looking for okay what to do next right like so the the primer phase kind of is over right like I'm going to reorganize that all that material um I did it for the book obviously so I'm going to extrapolate it into a course Possibly I'm going to leave Patreon behind, finally, because Patreon is terrible. But then again, thank you so much if you want to join me there, because it really helps. Um, I might join another platform, maybe Podia, maybe Mighty Networks, uh, something a little bit more uh, tailored. But anyway, you know, that that content is done, right? That that material is done. So I was thinking, oh, where, we, where can we go next? Something I say many times is that I really don't believe in the possibility to teach more advanced magic online because you get to a point where you need to be in a room with other people and there there has to be more than just words or just concepts. Uh, there has to be a sharing of energy or prana as you want to call it. Uh, you have to you have to 
engage with the, with the world around you, okay? So, you know, for the lockdown years, teaching the basics was fine because the basics, they, you, know, you can be on your own in your house and that's fine. Now, you know, ideally, uh, we would like to meet in person and, and that's something that I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to do it here. Um, I'm trying to build up a community, a physical community here in London where, where I live. And maybe, you know, this physical community at some point can, can go worldwide. You never know. But as I was looking what other people are doing, I found out this person, I'm not going to name it. Well, let's say that there's, there are people out there that are literally teaching you, if you can find them, I won't, I won't share the link. Things like, well, if you give me, on Patreon, right? Like, if you, if you join this Patreon for $50 a month, which is not little, especially in, the, in these recession years, for $50 a month, I will, I will turn you into a universe B vampire uh, with, with an aura similar to mine. And I was like, I was reading that and I was like, wow, that's wild. Especially if you know a little bit of the lingo, you know that, you know, using universe B, it's connected with the idea of Kenneth Grant and Michael Bertio. Michael Bertio was my teacher, direct. I mean, I mean, I know him personally. So I know what I'm going through about the universe B. And I know it cannot be taught, <laughs> right, um, directly. Um, you would argue that maybe Michael did teach it, teach the ideas behind it in, you know, in, the, in the 60s and 70s and 80s uh, via, you know, mail order courses. But that was, that was like 40, 50 years ago, right? Uh, now it's different. So anyway, I was like, well, this is wild. Then I went on YouTube, I found this person on YouTube, and this person on YouTube is there pretty much bullshitting you about how with their incredible aura, and because they belong to a super strong lineage of magicians, they can actually change the inner working of your body of light and make you uh, a, a master, uh, a vampire, all this, all these buzzwords, right? And of course, sex magic is there, spiritual sex magic, astral sex magic. And I was like, wow, this is snake oil selling, literally. Like, we we're getting to the point where we're pretty much we're back to everything that I thought we forgot. And that was, you know, EA cutting and uh, became a living douchebag. I thought we were beyond that stage. And apparently not. So, I, and I also the reality there is that my videos or the videos of people that you know try to do actual um, teaching, that you will never find them because unless you have the uh, the correct um, title, I I don't have the correct thumbnail because of course I should put my face like really struggling, like maybe I'm invoking some crazy Kundalini energy. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, if, if you don't have all this little bullshit, it's not just it's gonna go work. So, the point I'm making here is that don't fall for this crap. No one can do magic for you. No one can change your aura if you pay them 50 pounds a month. You can pay 50 pounds a month, or 50 dollars a month, or 50 euros a month to somebody who tutors you and tell you, you know, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, if your practice is right, if your practice is wrong, if you, especially if you are, for instance, you want to be a telemite, well, you, you, you want to you wanna talk to people who've been there before. Um, a lot of people in, in, the, in, in, in this, you know, in the cultosphere, they will also be very against the idea of receiving money. Obviously, I am not, because I've been working with, on Patreon for the last two years and, and counting. I think there must be a point where you cut the bullshit and don't fall for snake oil sellers. One thing that you should read, if you want to understand what magic really is, right? And if you don't want like a primer that will just tell you, okay, start doing the, the rituals, that is my approach. I really believe that when you, when you start with magic, it's much better for you to select a path Right, select a, a system, work the system by doing by possibly having somebody that can give, tell you, you know, do this ritual, don't do that ritual, uh, do this practice, don't do that practice. But you must do the practice because if you start thinking too much about practice, since we're talking about magic and not science, uh, since we're talking about 
something that has to do with a factor infinite and unknown, if, if I can quote from Liber Alba Legis, that you, you cannot put your hands on, at least at the beginning. Uh, to think too much about it is, I think it's gonna, it's gonna be problematic. Like you are gonna, you're gonna end up thinking about what you're doing about, instead of doing it. This is a point I'm, I'm making in, in my lessons, I'm making in my book. If you, if you get the book, you will read, you, you will know what I'm talking about. But since that book is not out for at least seven months to still, and maybe you do want to read a little bit about magic, I suggest you get this one here. S-S-O-T-B-M-E. It's a little joke, if you want. It is Sex Secret of the Black Missions Exposed. Okay, I should be back now. I, I hope I'm back now. Yes. So, uh, sorry if, if, if you see something. Okay, perfect. So, you will, I would say, like, it will, it's a book that will tell you what magic is, what magic isn't, and will give you a solid philosophical foundation that will let you understand that, yes, no one can turn you into, you know, a universe B vampire just by, I don't know, thinking about it, I suppose. So that's that's the point I wanted to make tonight, and that's why I uh, comp I'm pretty sure this this um, live stream, uh, this video will be actually uh, will actually be popular. So I cut out when I suggest the book. Okay, the book is this one. It is uh, Ramsey Dukes, S S O T B M E, Sex Secrets of the Black Magicians Exposed an essay on magic. This book, you must read it. If you want to, I, I would suggest that as a, if you're a complete neophyte, get the book, read the book, and then put it away for many years and go back to do the practice. If you're more advanced, this book should be with you all the time. It really should be, it, 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 I never found anyone who explained magic and how magic interacts with art, with science, with religion, which are the four modalities that uh, we as humans interact the uni with the universe with, right? I never found anybody who explained it better than him. And this, this was out, I don't remember this was out in the late 70s or 80s. It's been out for a long time. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. Um, it, it go, it, it, you get it, pretty much. Now... Questions, because I'm receiving some questions here. Uh, let me see. One question. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I'm reading from, uh, from the app. Somebody is asking me, are you a member of the rectified Scottish Rite? Uh, I'm fascinated with, the, with this rite, and uh, Arthur Edward White considered it to be the most esoterically valuable Masonic system. Would you recommend looking into it for occultists? So, no, I'm not a member of the rectified Scottish Rite. I'm a member of the normal Scottish Rite, which I, if you're a Freemason, uh, I suggest you eventually to become a Scottish Rite Freemason because, in my opinion, there is the one ceremony in particular, which is the ceremony of the 18th degree, which is, in my opinion, the most beautiful ceremony in Masonry. Uh, the the degree of royal master, which is found in the cryptic cryptic uh, cryptic degrees in the United States and in the royal and select degrees here in the UK, it's a very close second, and I would say the Holy Royal Arch is a third. Um, there's other things. I mean, free, free, if you like Freemasonry, it's so beautiful. Now, esoteric Freemasonry. It's not found in any of this, in my opinion. In my opinion, esoteric Freemasonry, it's found in the Memphis Mizraim Rite, or Egyptian Rite, or Rite of Cagliostro, which is something that I experience. I've been a I've been member of uh, Memphis Mizraim Lodge. I'm not anymore, mostly because of uh, personal reasons, uh, not because I had any problems with them. They are very good. They're, there's, a very, there's a very good... Memphis Mizraim group here in the UK, here in London especially, I definitely suggest you to look them up. 
And uh, that is where the real um, esoteric Freemasonry is found, in my opinion. Somebody's asking me in the chat if I've ever been to Scotland. Uh, yes, I have. Uh, many times. Um, visit Glasgow, plenty of friends there. Edinburgh, been plenty of time. I've been to Roslyn Chapel. Mm. The first time before Dan Brown, or, you know, around the time Dan Brown made it popular. And it was a little, little, little chapel, chapel, you know, chapel with no one around. And now, of course, it's a massive uh, tourist attraction. Which, to be fair, it's fine. Uh, they they saved a fantastic place, so I'm 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 not. I don't have any problem with that. I've never been in a Scottish lodge uh, as a Freemason, and I wish I will at some point because uh, I hear it's really beautiful, and uh, I haven't got the chance to. There's another. Not gonna lie message let me see what they're asking i like this thing do you like do you guys like this thing i kind of like this thing um okay uh so once again message on free mystery. something that i notice is that a lot of you on instagram everybody using the and uh, the ngl app uh, you guys are really fascinated you know fascinated and interested in free misery. um i have a lecture on patreon at the pyrocat theater on esoteric freemasonry which i speak about you know the the regular masonry esoteric egyptian freemasonry where crowley factures into all of this if you're interested go and join me it's fun so what are your thoughts on shriner freemasonry and the order of the royal jesters are they more esoteric well i don't have any direct experience with any of them and in fact i only ever heard you know, read the name of the royal justice. I, I, uh, I, I don't know anything about them. In fact, I will definitely look them up because it sounds like a very interesting name. Um, when it comes to Shriner Freemasonry, uh, I'm not a member. Uh, I've never been into a Shriner Lodge. I know Shriners. Um, there, it's definitely something that's much more popular in the United States. I don't even know if there's any Shriner, Shriner lodges here in the UK. To be fair, uh, is it more esoteric? Possibly. I found out that in general, uh, U.S. Freemasonry has either it's either more esoteric than U.K. Freemasonry, or it's pretty much like knife and fork masons, you know, and nothing else. It, the, here in the U.K. Freemasonry, it's almost not esoteric at all. They really push you to go into the SRIA, or the which is the Societa Sociocrania in Anglia, uh, the precursor of the Golden Dome. And you can get to there after, you know, after being a um, um, Craft Lodge Mason, a Holy Royal Arch Mason, and I don't know if you have to be something else as well. I mean, you have to go through certain, you have to jump some hoops before you can get there. They really push all the esoteric Masons into that direction, whereby in, in the US you will find lodges and degrees that do more esoteric stuff not so much here in the uk but like i said i'm not a shriner um and honestly i'm very curious about the this royal jesters because they seem definitely interesting like it's an interesting name all right let me see here okay this is an interesting one so crowley wrote in the confessions that the oto or the Templarientis system contains all the valuable teachings in freemasonry why do you think an OTO member should join regular Freemasonry? This is a perfect question. Well done, whoever you sent me this. So, I joined Freemasonry after being an OTO, after being initiated in the OTO, because of one important, and I would say fundamental reason. Don't trust what Crowley writes in the Confession. Don't, don't trust what Crowley writes in Libra 194, in Liber uh, 52, in Liber 101, in all the, con in all the um, foundation documents of the OTO. In the sense that Crowley laid out a best case scenario. The OTO you will join today, the OTO I joined, the, the Caliphate OTO, OTO Incorporate, the, the Americans pretty much that won the landmark case for the copyrights in 1985. Well, they have no clue what they're doing. They never had, possibly never will, will have it. So they've been scrambling for 40 years to get something going. And as my friend Peter Levanda stated very correctly, uh, they tried to create the Blue Equinox or the Confessions, so um, OTO for a long time. And they failed. 
because most of them had no clues how a Masonic system would work. Most of them were not Freemasons before. And the point being is that since they failed, now they're pushing the, the idea that everything is based on Liber Oz, which is pretty much like cheap libertarianism in their view. Liber Oz is much more complex than that, but anyway. So why would you join Freemasonry if you're an OTO member? Well, to understand what you're doing, because the OTO rituals are beautiful, but they are uh, a telemic update of the rituals of Craft Lodge, of Holy Royal Arch, of, um, you know, 18 degree of the Scottish Rite, of, which is the 5th degree OTO, of 30th degree of Scottish Rite, which is the 6th degree OTO, or 33rd degree of Scottish Rite, which is 7th degree OTO, and then, you know, 8, 9, and 8, 10, and 11, they are, mm, they're, they're not Masonic. So, the reality there is that you will be thrown into heavy Masonic symbolism that has been turned up upside down because the idea that Telema turns things upside down, the concept of the mysteries of the averse is very fundamental in Telema. And the idea is that if you don't know where you're supposed to come from, if you don't see how things have been turned upside down, you're not appreciating the telemization of the ritual. So if you're an OTO member, first of all, get out because you're in a cult. And even if, even if your lodge is good, even if the people around you are great, um, the people at the top are completely messed up. Read my, uh, my exposition of why I left. Uh, it's on the link below as usual <laughs> or on my website and uh, you will get better insight. But the reality there is that if you still for whatever reason, think that but most time, most, most time, uh, most of the time, people remain the OTO for the sunk cost fallacy. I was one of them. You know, I put so many years into this. Should I live now? I will get to the degrees where I can make things change, and then things will be better. It's so bullshit. It's not gonna change. They're not gonna change. You're not gonna change. But still, even if you are going to do that, well, um, re join a, join a regular lodge, uh, join Freemasonry because you will understand what you're doing. You will understand what you are subverting. You, you, are this, you will understand what you are telemizing, okay? Um, I think that's all I wanna say. So, uh, uh, which bitch? I love which bitch. <laughs> it's such a great nickname. Which bitch is asking, what do non-esoteric Freemasons do? Most of what, uh, so first of all, mm, Freemasonry, especially in the UK, but everywhere, regular Freemasonry, it's mostly a charity drive, okay? Uh, Freemasons uh, pull together a lot of money for, um, for good causes. Here in the UK, Freemasonry, United Grand Lodge of England, is the second biggest charity in the country. The first is Lotto. So that's what, that's what Freemasons do. They come together, raise money for charity. What do they do uh, on, a, on a ritual level? Well, I'm not going to tell you because I am still a Freemason, so I'm not going to divulge the secrets of a group that I'm still a member of. But let's say there is a ritual element to that. And is that ritual esoteric? I think it is esoteric, but I think that the focus of... It's, it's almost like... It's almost like they don't want to put the focus on the esoterism too much. Why is that? Possibly because Freemasonry was give was dealt a very heavy blow in the 80s due to the satanic panic. Possibly because there's always been inside regular Freemasonry a huge contingent of people that wanted the esoteric part gone away and the ritual remaining uh, um, vestigial in a way. So, I will tell you though, it's sitting in a lodge, especially here in London, that we know we get to my lodge. I'm, I'm the immediate past master of Goliath Lodge 5595. Uh, it was, um, it's great because, you know, we, we sit in lodge in um, the beautiful temple in Covent Garden. Uh, you go into a beautiful place and you spend some beautiful time hearing beautiful things. 
there's a lot of beauty in Freemasonry, um, which is, yeah, I'm not going to tell you that. Uh, I, Joseph, Joseph Grace, I don't know what you're talking. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, there's always one in the chat that, that sprouts just nonsense. Um, not going to lie, messages. I'm going to answer a couple more of this, and then, um, then we're going to move on. I mean, we're going to say my goodbyes. By the way, um, once again, I need to tell you, if you want to support me, super stickers, super chats, Patreon, you know that. Okay, oh, this is, uh, ooh, who are you? <laughs> Have you read Cornelius, uh, uh, um, Jerry Cornelius, uh, recent book regarding sex magic and the ninth degree? If so, what are your thoughts? Jerry Cornelius' books are some of the best expose of the secrets of the OTO. Like the man or not, uh, I think he has a very extreme libertarian streak that I don't subscribe to. But um, Jerry Cornelius' book um, at least give you an idea of how the, 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 the secrets of the OTO, the nine degree of the OTO, is supposed to, to work. Um, I don't agree with everything he wrote. The last book, uh, there's a lot of interesting things in it. Um, you know, when people... You know, Say the quiet part loud, pretty much. Um, I, I like I like what he writes a lot. Okay, uh, another one. My uncle is a member of the Old Fellows organization. They have Masonic-like rituals and esoteric diction. Do you know anything about the organ this organization? I know it exists. Uh, it's like, you know, uh, it's like with the Shriners. I know it exists. Uh, I never feel drawn to it. Uh, and uh, I cannot speak about it, really. Um... They have beautiful sashes, though. They have the very... I, I really like all their regalia. So maybe it's another thing I will look into it, like like the, the Royal Jesters. That, I mean, Royal Order of the Royal Jesters is a fucking great name. Wish, wish I imagined it. Um, oh, this is a very good one as well. Are all the Freemasons worldwide doing the same stuff? Yes and no. First of all, Freemasonry, it's not this, this, this monolithic one thing, right? Um, of course, everybody who is from the outside and read about Freemasonry from, you know, from, from Dan Brown to uh, Lee Embajan to, you know, Holy Book, Holy Grail, they all think that there's this mysterious uh, New World Order like Illuminati that they're all, it's, it's not like that. There are... The Freemasonry you will find in here in the in the UK, regular Freemasonry, United Grand Lodge of England Freemasonry, for instance, does one, one specific ritual called emulation ritual, which is very different from the kind of ritual you will find in Germany, which is I think it's called the Zinnerdorf ritual. I might be wrong, but I think it, I'm not. It's very different from what you find in Scandinavia. They have a very specific, Swedish or it's called yeah, Scandinavian right. Uh, uh, in 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 the US, you will find mostly some something called the Prescott ritual, which is similar to emulation, but not really. Um, and this is for regular Freemasonry. When you go on continental Freemasonry, which is you know it Italy, France, also called Grand Orient Freemasonry, that's really different. And uh, or, you know that's also the blueprint for Egyptian style Freemasonry. So. No, uh, all Freemasons worldwide don't do the same thing, not at all. There are very similar lessons, that is true, but when it comes to ritual per se, there's a plethora of them, and uh, some are quite different from each other, in fact. All right, couple more. Okay, so is every OTO worldwide bullshit today? What about German, Austrian, and Switzerland OTO? So, if you're asking me if... Is all the OTO under Bill Brees, I'm an else beta shit? Yes. Um, will there be uh, selected lodges or national um, groups that are better? Yes, as well. Um, the Polish OTO under Christos, Christoph uh, Azarevics, uh, I think, sorry, Christoph, if I uh, <laughs> misspelled your name, they're doing, they always been doing great stuff. He's, he's a serious magician, he's very dedicated, he's very knowledgeable, uh, and he's, you know, he, he still is under 
William Brees uh, under Ibanez Beta, and it still uh, is connected with you know with a specific lineage of the AA, which is absolutely bonkers for me. But he's always been very serious about it. Um, the people in Italy, same 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 thing. They've always been very serious. They are they're very few. They're not been growing forever. Uh, they they tend to be very culty, but they've always been very serious. Um, is it all bullshit? The, the problem is that the people at the top, the absolute top, they will bullshit. They will bullshit people. And uh, you're not going to get out of it. Uh, you will not be promoted. You will not, unless they die and they, and you know, the stand-up people tend to die last, unfortunately, uh, you will, you will not replace them. And, and so it's nepotism. Um, and I don't see a way out. Maybe in 10, in a hundred years, if the OTO is still out, I think the OTO will disappear in, five years, 10 years tops, because the audio has nothing to offer. If you really want to look about the secrets, it's all out there. Get Jerry Cornell's book. It's all, it's all there. Okay, two more, and then we call it. Ooh, uh, this is uh, interesting. If you, could, um, if you could time travel, where would you go and who would you meet? I can try and travel. I mean, not with my physical body, but uh, time travel is possible in the astral. Uh, who would I meet? Usually, you know, when you ask this question, it's always like, oh, you know, I, I, you need to meet this important person of the past. You know what? I'll tell you. I would like to time travel, and maybe I'll do uh, with, 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 the, with the techniques I was discussing about in the future and see what it's there. Uh, I don't know. I'm really not... I tend to not glory. I, I, I don't tend to glorify the past too much. I tend to have a little bit of nostalgia for my past, personal past, because I had a lot of fun in my twenties and thirties as a musician around the world. But um, the past itself, ah, who knows, man? I mean, think about it. We, despite we're living in terrible times of recession, possible World War Three uh, still looming over. Okay, um, it should be back. It should be back. I don't know if it's back. Is it back? Am I back? Am I back? Yes, yes, no, I, yes, I'm back. Amazing. Thank you, Jessica, for moderating, by the way. So, would you join the OTO in Roy's lifetime? I'll tell you why not. Because there was no OTO in Roy's lifetime. Uh, it's, there's pretty compelling evidence that the OTO never really existed outside of uh, you know, Theodore Roy's papers. Uh, pretty compelling evidence. Uh, read um, Richard Kaczynski on it, especially uh, Forgotten Templars, which is the book that he self-published. I think it's, you think it's, you can still get a copy. And it tells the stories of the, of the four people that you know, created your, the, um, the OTO before Crowley joined. Uh, pretty compelling evidence, it never, they, they, they never did anything. So would I join it? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe in, in order to tell Royce not to, to, to give Crowley anything, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so, okay, this is going to be the last one. And once again, thank you for being here tonight. In America, Freemasonry, in American Freemasonry, there is a lot of racism and homophobia, especially in the southern states. Recently, a pastor was forced to resign from Lodge in Georgia because he married a gay couple. It was his, doing, uh, his uh, duty doing his pastor. Outrageous. I agree with you. You will be interesting to know that the... I think it's the, 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 the Grand Lodge of Georgia but I might be wrong, but well, the uh, United Grand Lodge of England, which is the main Masonic, um, how do you say, um, well, the main Masonic Lodge, Grand Lodge, that gives um, regularity to other lodges, because this was the first, removed regularity, I think, from the Grand Lodge of, uh, of Georgia, because of their racism. Unfortunately, and we're seeing it nowadays, with whatever's been happening in the news, Racism never left the southern states. Uh, they still peddle the bullshit of confederacy. Uh, and that is the sadness of it all. Um, Jeff Perry is saying, as a U.S. brother, I can tell you there is a significant difference between the northern and southern jurisdiction in the U.S. Yes, I'm aware, brother. Uh, I know. 
like I said, uh, I have I have plenty of brethren in the United States, and I I know it, it's 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 hard time. The reality there is, like I said, like you know that kind of shit never went away, and uh, I think the United States are going to go into a serious dark night of the soul. They've been they've been there for a while, but it's gonna hit the fan very hard in the coming months and maybe years. And I hope you know they'll come out of it a stronger, more finally unified country. Uh, and I agree, it's absolutely outrageous. There's no space for racism, homophobia, transphobia. No, there's there's no space for any phobia anymore. Like it's the fucking twenty first century. Uh, we really should get out of this bullshit. But unfortunately, we're not. And. Uh, I guess that's also why it would be nice if people could embrace Telema. But then, of course, you know, a lot of Telemites are the same kind of edgelords. So we're definitely living in interesting times. And unfortunately, I don't have a positive note to it. And that I think we have to just brace for some interesting years ahead of us. And uh, hopefully we're going to be better. All right. I think that's enough for the return of the live stream. Thank you all for being here tonight. It's, it's been great. I really enjoy doing this. Uh, I think I will be going back to do this again more often. Uh, maybe we can just do, you know, the sessions like this, right? Um, I, I really didn't want to do the kind of content here on YouTube that I did in months before, where, where there was a little bit of drama going around. But um, I, I, think, I think we can have the sessions where we're going to just have some chats and I can answer some of your questions if you want. Once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for all for your support. Uh, do what the will shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love and the will. Good night. <laughs>